in the previous class we looked at uh, the interaction between uh, nozzle flow and fan of flow and under this category we looked at uh, two situations one when a uh, convergent nozzle is located downstream of a pipe or a duct. So, this was the uh, situation that we looked at. So, we had a convergent nozzle which was located uh, downstream of a pipe. So, we have flow coming in like this and uh, going out like this. So, we had uh, fan of flow in this uh, section and uh, this is the nozzle. So, we had isentropic flow in the uh, nozzle section. And then we also considered a situation when we had a nozzle which uh, preceded a pipe like this, pipe or a duct like this. So, we had flow which was uh, going through. <clears throat> so, we had fan of flow here and this was the nozzle. So, we had isentropic flow in the nozzle. We looked at uh, both these cases in the, uh, uh, in the previous lecture. And today we are going to look at uh, the interaction between uh, flow in a convergent divergent nozzle and a uh, duct. So, the situation that we are looking at is something like this. So, we have a convergent divergent nozzle which precedes a uh, duct or a pipe. So, we have a duct or a pipe which uh, looks like this. So, we have flow entering this way and exiting this way. So, let us label this as uh, section 1 this is section 2 and this is uh, section 3 and the flow is isentropic in, uh, in this part in the nozzle part and we have fan of flow in this part of the domain. So, if I uh, sketch the process on a, a TS diagram, the uh, diagram would look something like this. So, let us uh, take a TS diagram and let us say that this is my uh, initial stagnation state. So, let us say this is uh, T01 and let us say this is P01. So, that this is stagnation state 0, 1 and we start at let us say a subsonic state which is uh, 1 as given here like this. So, that is the subsonic state where the Mach number is less than 1 and let us say that this is T star corresponding to this value. So, this is m equal to 1 and this is m less than 1 and this is m greater than 1. So, the flow enters at a subsonic uh, Mach number, the subsonic Mach number and then the flow reaches a supersonic Mach number at state 2. So, it undergoes an isentropic expansion process from state 1 to state 2 with the throat being at the sonic state. And after doing this, uh, we have a FANO process. So, the FANO curve for the given mass flow rate may look something like this, like this. So, the FANO curve looks something like this. So, this is my state 2 and the FANO curve uh, which passes through state 2 may look something like this and if L is less than, if the length of the duct L is less than L star corresponding to Mach number M2, then state point 2 or state point 3 may lie somewhere here. So, the flow proceeds this way from 2 to 3. We have FANO flow from here to here. So, this is the FANO curve. So, this is what we get if L is less than uh, L star. So, this is the end state for L less than L star corresponding to M2. If L is equal to L star corresponding to M2, then the exit state would lie here. So, this is when L is equal to L star corresponding to M2. Now, if the L is actually greater than L star corresponding to M2, then there is going to be a normal shock somewhere in the diversion uh, part of the, I am sorry, there is going to be a normal shock in the duct somewhere 
and then the flow becomes subsonic across the normal shock and then it goes from there. So the same situation if I try to illustrate on, on this uh, diagram then the flow may go something like this. So there is a normal shock and the corresponding position may be something like this. So let us call this state x and this state as y. So this is x and this state is y. So the uh, flow goes from 1 to 2 to x and then it jumps to y and then depending upon the exit condition it may reach state 3 or the sonic state even if L is greater than L star. So it will definitely reach state point 3 if L is equal to L star. If it is if L is greater than L star then we have a normal shock and it may reach the sonic state even in this case depending upon the ambient or the back pressure condition. Okay, so these are the three possible uh, solutions that note that in this case the, uh, the mass flow rate once we have this because this flow is isentropic the mass flow rate in this case is not changed as a result of the addition of the duct only the, uh, the only thing that can change uh, probably are the, uh, the exit pressure and the presence of a shock you may or may not have a shock depending upon the length of the duct. Unlike the previous case, the mass flow rate is not changed in this case unless you make the shocks, uh, unless you make this length so long that you go all the way back and change the flow in the nozzle which is very unlikely. Okay? So this covers all aspects of interaction between a nozzle flow and a fan of flow. We can do similar thing or almost identical thing uh, for interaction between nozzle flow and a Rayleigh flow. Okay? It is not very difficult to do. We will try to do that through a numerical example. So the next thing that we are going to do is uh, a numerical example first uh, one involving nozzle flow and a fan of flow and then another one involving uh, nozzle flow and Rayleigh flow. We will do two examples. Let us do the first one. So the example uh, reads like this. Air flows through a nozzle pipe combination which looks like this so air flows through the nozzle pipe combination uh, shown in the figure so this is one this is the throat and this is labeled as two The stagnation conditions at the nozzle inlet are 1 mega Pascal and 500 Kelvin. The pipe diameter is 0 0.05 meters and it is 5 meter long. Determine the reduction in mass flow rate due to the presence of the pipe. Take F to be 0 0.024 and the back pressure to be 100 kilo Pascal. Okay? So let us uh, write down the uh, information that is given in the problem. The length of the pipe is given to be 5 meters and P01 is given to be 1 mega Pascal, T01 is given to be 500 Kelvin. The diameter of the pipe is also given. So area of the throat is pi times the diameter of the pipe which is 0 0.05 meters. So that is also known. Okay, so let us leave it like this. So that is known. So this is the area of the throat in meter square. If I do not have the pipe, if I do not have the pipe then you can see that the uh, flow through the nozzle is definitely going to be choked because P star corresponding, uh, corresponding to this P01 is quite high. The ambient pressure is given to be 100 kPa. So that is given in the problem. So P star corresponding to this P01 is going to be much higher than 100 kPa. So in the absence of the pipe the nozzle is definitely choked. Let us write it like this P star P 
can be obtained from the uh, because the uh, flow is isentropic we can obtain the value from the uh, gas tables let us uh, go ahead and do that. P0 is given and right? we can calculate uh, P star like this. So, P0 over P star for this case is 1.89293. So, this is P01 divided by 1.89293 and this value comes out to be, can someone calculate this value and tell me? Five twenty eight kilo Pascal. It is important to actually calculate the P star in these cases where the ambient pressure is given. You cannot simply assume M to be 1. You need to check to see whether M is indeed 1 or not. So, we calculate uh, P star for this case since P star is greater than P ambient, which is 100 kPa, the nozzle is choked at the exit at the in this case at the throat section which means I can calculate my mass flow rate mass flow rate corresponding to no pipe being present. So, that corresponds to length of pipe being uh, 0 this is nothing but P0 P01 A throat divided by square root of T01 times gamma over R times 2 over gamma plus 1 raised to the power gamma plus 1 over gamma minus 1. And if you plug in the values and take gamma to be 1.4 for this case, you get this to be 3.54 kilogram per second for the case when the pipe is absent. When the pipe is present, the stagnation pressure at the throat is known, right? That is equal to still that is equal to P01. Okay. So, first we need to see whether the flow is choked at the exit or not. Okay. So, what we do is the following, uh, if so with the pipe present check to see if L is equal to L star. Once we do that other things can be easily uh, done that is not a problem. So, we go to the uh, Fano table F is given to be 0 0.02. So, F times L over D is equal to 0 0.024 times 5 divided by D is 0 0.05 and if you evaluate this, this comes out to be 2.4 and we assume this to be L star, right. We take this to be L star. So, we say that this is L star and we want to see whether 
the exit pressure P star is greater than P ambient or not. So from the Fano table, we get for this value of F L star over D, we get M throat to be approximately 0 0.4. And we also get P0 over P star from the table, from the Fano table. We get P over P star and also P0 over P star. So, the, from this we can show that P star is greater than 100 kilo Pascal which is the ambient pressure. Hence the nozzle is choked. Okay, is this clear? Go ahead. P star is at a exit of pipe, now. Yeah. This so P star, star, yeah, P star. And they, remember, we have assumed L to be equal to L star. So, P star is at the exit of the pipe. Okay. In fact, we can, uh, if you want, we can go through this, that is not a problem. Let us go ahead and do this calculation. Okay. So, let us uh, go to the table and get for m equal to 0.4, P0 over P can be evaluated as. 1.11655 from the isentropic table. P0 is known, therefore, P throat is equal to P0 is given to be 1 mega Pascal, so that is 1000 kilo Pascal divided by 1.116. 5, 5. Can someone tell me what this is? So, this is 895 kilo Pascal. Now, from Fano table, for m equal to equal to 0 0.4, p over p star is 2.69582. So, p throat is known. So, from this I can calculate p star to be 895 kilo Pascal divided by 2.69582 which is 332 kilo Pascal. So, if I assume L to be equal to L star and then go through with this calculation, I get my P star to be 332 which is more than 100 kilo Pascal which is the ambient pressure. Hence, I am safe in saying that the flow is indeed choked at the exit. If the ambient pressure is given, you must always check this to see that the pressure is more because it cannot be less than the ambient pressure. If it is going to be subsonic at the exit, then the exit pressure has to be equal to the ambient pressure and there is no possibility of over expansion in this case. Okay? So, that you must establish if the ambient pressure is given in the problem. Okay? So, this is uh, safe, we are ok. So, now the mass flow rate for a duct with uh, of length 5 meter being present here can be 
calculated like this rho throat times u throat times a throat. So, rho u a at the throat section and I can rewrite this as follows rho is nothing but p over r t and u can be written as m times square root of gamma r t and a we leave as it is. So, this evaluated at the throat section. And if I rearrange this in terms of the stagnation quantities, I can write this as p over p 0 1 times p 0 1 times so the gamma square root of gamma over r comes out like this. And there is a square root of t uh, there is a square root of t in the denominator so i can write this as all evaluated at the throat section okay so notice that i have multiplied and divided by a p not 1 I have multiplied and divided by a square root of t naught 1. So, I know m throat, I know a throat, I know t 0 1. So, this can be evaluated and I know this also all the quantities here can be evaluated and this mass flow rate comes out to be 2.235 kg per second. So, you can see that the mass flow rate because of the duct has reduced from 3.54 kilogram per second to a value of 2.235 kilogram per second. So, if I add a 5 meter pipe to the end of the nozzle, the mass flow rate reduces by about 37 percent approximately. Any questions or doubts? Okay. Let us do another example, this one involving interaction between a nozzle and a Rayleigh flow. Not exactly Rayleigh flow, but with heat addition. This problem reads like this in an aircraft jet engine fitted with a constant area after burner and a converging nozzle, air enters the nozzle with a stagnation temperature and pressure of 900 Kelvin and 0.5 mega Pascal when the after burner is not lit. Full stop. With the after burner lit, the stagnation temperature increases to 1900 Kelvin with a 15 percent loss in stagnation pressure at the nozzle inlet. If the mass flow rate has to be maintained at 90 kilogram per second, determine the required nozzle area in both cases. Also determine the thrust augmentation with afterburner operation, assuming that the engine is on a static test stand 
at sea level within bracket ambient pressure 0 0.1 mega Pascal assume isentropic process for the nozzle for the uh, fluid that passes through the afterburner take gamma to be 4 thirds and Cp to be 1.148 kilojoule per kg per Kelvin. So this is the second worked example let us sketch the problem or the situation given in the problem. So we have a constant area after burner followed by a conversion nozzle. So heat is when the after burner is so this is the after burner constant area after burner and this is the nozzle. Hundred kilo Pascal and P zero. So let us call this one. Let's call this two. And this is the exit section. So there is no problem. So P zero one is given to be zero point five mega Pascal and T zero one is given to be nine hundred Kelvin. this is without the after burner okay, so that is the first case that we are going to look at without after burner what is the mass flow rate the throat area and the thrust that is required m dot is given to be 90 kg per second so let us uh, write this problem statement slightly differently for both cases gamma is given to be 4 thirds and Cp is given to be 1148 joule per kg Kelvin. So without after burner without after burner operation the T0 1 is given to be 900 Kelvin. So since ambient pressure is given we first need to check whether the nozzle is choked or not right. So when the after burner is not operating. Uh, there is no heat addition here. So stagnation quantities everything remains the same it is as if the duct is not present at all right. So P02 is equal to P01 so in this case P02 is equal to P01 and P02 is equal to T01 when the after burner is not operating. And P0 2 over P star as you know is equal to 2 over comma plus 1 correct I am sorry gamma plus 1 over 2 raised to the power gamma over gamma minus 1 and if I calculate this so from this if I calculate P star with the value of P02 that I have I get P star to be 270 kilo Pascal which is greater than the ambient pressure that means the nozzle the flow in the nozzle is choked and under expanded right. So this is say from the nozzle is choked at the exit <coughs> and under expanded also. So 
So, P exit is equal to 270 k power, M exit is 1 and T 0 2 is known. So, I can calculate T exit is equal to T star and that is nothing but 2 over comma plus 1 times T 0 2. And this comes out to be 771 Kelvin. And the exit velocity u e is square root of gamma times r times t e, right? Because the Mach number at exit is 1, the u e is square root of gamma r t e. And if you remember, this is gamma, C p is nothing but gamma times r over gamma minus 1. So, we can rewrite this in terms of C p is given in the problem. So, I can write this as gamma minus 1 over gamma times C p times T e. So, this gives me the velocity at exit to be 543 meter per second. nozzle is choked and the mass flow rate is given to be 90 kg per second. So, I can use the expression for choked mass flow in a nozzle and the throat area can be calculated from our usual formula m dot equal to P 0 a throat divided by square root of T naught. So, therefore, a throat when the afterburner is not in operation, if you substitute the numbers, this comes out to be 0 0.1359 meter square. Okay. And uh, by using the impulse function, we can calculate the thrust, although we have not shown this formula, we will uh, show this later on, but for us uh, it is easy to use it now. So, the thrust is given by the expression m dot times u e minus u infinity plus and since it is mounted on a test stand, u infinity is 0. So, this is the expression for the uh, thrust produced by the afterburner and if you substitute the numbers, notice that since the flow is under expanded, P minus P infinity is a positive number. So, we are going to get some uh, thrust from both the terms. So, this comes out to be 48.87 from the first term and from the second term we get 23.103. So, it sums up to 70 approximately 72 kilo Newtons of thrust. This is when the afterburner is not lit that means we are not changing the stagnation temperature here. So, when the afterburner is in operation we need to do the same calculation. So, let us see what happens when the afterburner T02 is given to be mass flow rate has to be maintained the same, so that does not change. T02 is given to be 1900 Kelvin and P02 is given to be 0 0.85 times P01. It said that there is a 15 percent loss of 
stagnation pressure. So, this comes out to be 0 0.85 times P01 and that is nothing but 425 kilo Pascal. And we calculate P star once again for P01 equal to, I am sorry, uh, for P02 equal to 425 kilo Pascal, P star works out to be 229 kilo Pascal, which is still greater than the ambient pressure. So, flow at the nozzle exit is choked and under expanded. Therefore, P exit is equal to 229 kilo Pascal, M exit is equal to 1. And T exit can also be calculated from the given value of the stagnation temperature. So, T exit comes out to be 1629 Kelvin that is equal to T star. Right? And velocity at the exit can be calculated in the same manner as before. So, it is square root of gamma r times T exit and if you substitute the numbers you get this to be 789 meter per second. So, that the thrust now with the afterburner operating if I substitute into these two uh, into this expression. So, the thrust the afterburner operating comes out to be 71 for the first term plus 30 for the second term that is 101 kilo newtons. I am sorry, I am going to calculate that. Yeah. Okay. So, shall we calculate that before doing this? Okay. Mass flow rate remains the same. Now, I have my uh, quantities. So, I can use this formula to calculate the new exit area. P0 is changed, T0 is changed. So, remember or by looking at the numbers, you see that P0 has decreased from before, T0 has increased from before, M has remained the same. So, that means A throat has to increase to accommodate the same mass flow rate. So, if you calculate for these values, A throat with the afterburner in operation has to be more and it comes out to be 0 0.2323 meter square. So, you can see that the area has to be throat area has to be increased to accommodate the same mass flow rate now. If I substitute this value of the area exit area into my expression for thrust which is over here. So, if I substitute mass flow rate is the same I have a new exit velocity, new exit pressure ambient pressure is the same I have new exit area. If I substitute these values into this then I get thrust with the afterburner in operation to be 71 plus 30 that is 101 kilo Newton which is roughly a 40 percent increase in the thrust. So, this shows that the afterburner is an extremely useful and convenient device for short term thrust augmentation. It is very simple in construction. And if you want short term thrust augment, it is not very efficient, but if you want short term thrust augmentation, then it is a very effective way of achieving that. Okay, you get a 40 percent increase by, uh, by injecting more fuel into the stream here, burning it, increasing the stagnation temperature and then expanding it in the nozzle with increased area. So, the only additional complexity is that the area of the nozzle has to be increased. So, which means you need a variable area, variable throat area nozzle when an afterburner is connected to the engine and we will see how these nozzles are fabricated later on when we talk about after burning engines.
okay. But this demonstrates the augmentation in thrust that is possible, okay. Now one uh, point that we discussed earlier uh, has to do with uh, P0 over P ambient. Now if you take the case without afterburner operation, you can see that P0 is 500 mega Pascal. So P0 over P ambient is 5, correct? The question is since P0 over P ambient is 5 and I am using only a convergent nozzle, if I had used a convergent divergent nozzle, how much would the thrust have increased? Would I have gotten a lot more extra thrust or is it about the same, not worth doing a convergent divergent nozzle. We will examine that next just to complete the problem, okay. So we are looking at a situation when the afterburner is not uh, operating, so that is a simple uh, thing to look at and we are going to use a convergent divergent nozzle, right. So since P0 over P ambient is equal to 5 in this case 500 kilo Pascal over 100 kilo Pascal it is 5, is it better or beneficial? to use we earlier we stated that if p0 by p ambient is more than 3 or 4 approximately it may be better to use a convergent divergent nozzle let us see whether that is true or not so if you are going to use a cd nozzle and we expand the fluid correctly to the ambient pressure right so at the exit of the CD nozzle, the flow is correctly expanded and so P is equal to P ambient is equal to 100 kilo Pascal. So this means P0 over PE is equal to 5 and we also know that since the flow is isentropic, this is nothing but 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times Me square raised to the power gamma over gamma minus 1. So I substitute gamma equal to 4 thirds and I can solve this equation to obtain M e right to solve to get M e to be 1.73. In fact, if I had expanded the flow all the way to atmospheric pressure, my exit Mach number would be supersonic and correctly expanded. So once I have Me, I can get my exit temperature, static temperature. I know the stagnation temperature, so I can get my uh, exit static temperature from P0, 1 divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times Me square and this gives me 602 Kelvin. And using these two values, exit Mach number and static temperature, I can get my U exit as Me times square root of gamma RTE and the exit velocity comes out to be 830 meter per second. So the exit velocity with the convergent nozzle 
came out to be 543 meter per second. Now the exit velocity with the convergent divergent nozzle comes out to be 830 meter per second. But P e is equal to P ambient which is also P infinity. So if you now evaluate the thrust that is that the nozzle is going to develop, notice that if you look at these two terms, now with the convergent divergent nozzle this is going to be 0 because P e is equal to P ambient only this contributes to the thrust. So thrust in this case is going to be, so if you substitute the numbers you get the thrust to be about 75 kilo Newtons. Earlier it was 72 kilo Newtons, now it is about 75 kilo Newtons and improvement of 3 kilo Newtons. So definitely there is an improvement and the improvement will become better as your P0 over P ambient keeps increasing. It is 5 in this case, as it keeps getting better it will become more and more. So this shows that for these kinds of ratios P0 over P ambient it may not be worth having a convergent divergent nozzle because of the, the normal shock during startup and the complexity that it brings in. Okay, so it may be we may be better off just using a convergent nozzle in this case. Okay, any questions? Okay, so that concludes our uh, chapter on quasi one dimensional flows. We will start the next chapter on oblique shock waves.